What's up, duelists? Your boy is back, and I've got a spicy brand new deck list for y'all with lots of hidden synergies. I'm excited to show you guys this one. I've been working on it a little bit behind the scenes. I've been tweaking it here and there. We've been talking about it in the Discord, and this is kind of where it's at right now. It may evolve a little bit beyond this because there are some cards in this deck that I'm not sure if they're like optimal or not, but basically the deck is centered around this card right here, Dark World Lightning. This card is really, really good, especially when the highest played decks in the format are setting a lot of monsters or setting a lot of cards. And right now the highest played deck in the format is Vayu Turbo, which is setting a lot of cards. It's setting back row, it's setting Rikos, it's setting hamsters, and Dark World Lightning really shines there. It helps you clear back row, and it also can be done at pretty much free cost if you have the right discard, which is either Dandelion, Volcanic Shell, Brow, or Silva in this build. Volcanic Rocket can also get you a free discard for Dark World Lightning off of the Blaze Accelerator, but you do have to pitch your Blaze Accelerator. You can always get back the Blaze Accelerator because Volcanic Rocket can add it from the graveyard as well, so you only really need to play one of those, um, which is pretty sweet. So that's kind of like the core of this deck or the core idea of this deck is to use Dark World Lightning to poke at set monsters and to always have the initiative with your own set monsters. So use Dark World Lightning to pop their hamster, then you set your own. You can also use it to pop their Raikou or whatever, set your hamster, and then you have the initiative to set hamster. Uh, one thing that I think this deck could change moving forward is it could be more centered around just super nimble mega hamster because you have this Dark World Lightning to gain initiative, and then cut into some of the more like fun engine cards like Silva, Quick Draw, um, and maybe even a Volcanic Rocket, uh, or you know one of these other cards down here like Card Destruction or something could go just to um, really maximize off of that, that initiative you gain from using Dark World Lightning and then having something to play after you've gained the turn player initiative. Anyway, uh, that's the main deck. The side deck is also kind of a work in progress. Two Mask of Restraint for Frogs. Without Lone Fire, Mask of Restraint doesn't hurt you too, too much. Uh, it does shut off Stardust Dragon's activation, and it does shut off Tribute Summon Caius, but this deck can usually do pretty well under a Mask of Restraint because we don't have those Lone Fires, so it's not it's not shutting off too much. Um, and then, you know, Decree for the heavy back row decks, Triple Book for whatever we need to book. We can book something and pop it with Dark World Lightning too. It's not great, but it is a way to get Dark World Lightning live in matchups where it's normally not, like Black Wings. Um, two Cyber Dragons, Triple Crow to hate out graveyard cards. This card is really important in like the heavy quick draw list, especially with Decree. One Jane to search off charge. I'm not really sure why this is here. I just wanted to have it. And then one Consecrated also for Black Wings, so you can set up Consecrated Decree. Anyway, let's get into the first match so you guys can see some of the synergies. The first match is up against Yocasta. I win the Rock, Paper, Scissors um and we get to go first and you can see in the opening hand here it's a pretty solid opening hand we have quick draw dandy so you really can't complain about that and then you have brow so the thing about dark worlds in this deck is they don't work with quick draw so quick draw says you can send one monster and in Yu-Gi-Oh, sending is different from discarding why i i don't fucking know it just is there's they're just two different words that mean different things but they do the same thing functionally so if we pitch brow to quick draw it won't activate brow however if we do pitch brow for the effect of drill warrior it actually will because drill warrior doesn't say send it says discard one card and because it's part of the effect and not the cost it will activate brow so Brow doesn't activate with costs. Like if you pitched it to like Bryonic or Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, it wouldn't activate there. But because Drill Warrior, it's not a cost to discard a card, it's part of the effect, it will activate Brow. And what this creates is kind of like a, I don't know if you guys have ever played Magic the Gathering, but there's this card in Magic the Gathering called Howling Mine, where you just draw an extra card every turn. And that's kind of what Brow is with Drill Warrior. It's the best singular card with Drill Warrior, in my opinion. When you're just like looping drill because it just means i get to draw two cards every single turn which is fucking crazy like that's just amazing we draw into raiko we can set the raiko set the typhoon and pass so the reason i set the typhoon is in case the opponent has a black whirlwind i would like to hit it opponent's gonna set five normal summon psychic commander and attack the token which is pretty dangerous we're gonna end phase just blind typhoon i'm gonna try to hit a starlight road i'm probably just gonna See if I hit the Starlight or the Solemn, and then if I don't, then maybe we'll go for some Dark World Lightning Raikou stuff, and if we do, then maybe I'll go for the Heavy Storm straight up. 
Anyway, he passes back. Drill Warrior is going to come back. We draw Blaze Accelerator, which is not a good draw. Drill Warrior is going to add back Brow, and he tries to bottomless here. So this is another like stupid Edison format ruling, but you can't actually bottomless Drill Warrior when it comes in off of its effect. I'm not the best at explaining this. That's why I've pulled up edisonformat.com here to explain it for you. So the mandatory uh, trigger effect resolves sequentially. First, Drill Warrior, then add a monster from your graveyard to your hand. So because it resolves sequentially, you can't use Bottomless Trap Hole or Torrential Tribute. So look, versus Torrential Tribute. If Drill Warrior adds a monster from the graveyard to the hand, then Torrential Tribute cannot activate. Torrential Tribute can activate if a monster cannot be added. So because we have a monster that we can add back, where the hell is this shit? Um, oh my god, you guys saw my four losing streak to Edison Champ. That was so tilting. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, what basically what these cards are, Bottomless Trap Hole, is a when um, effect. So because of that, if the last thing to happen isn't a summon, then um, Bottomless Trap Hole and Torrential Tribute can't be activated. And because technically the last thing to happen is me adding a monster from my graveyard to my hand, the summon window happens like in the middle of a sequential resolution and therefore bottomless trap hole cannot activate here it's a really stupid fucking ruling and it's impossible to explain to a lot of people i just said um i just say you can't and like because of some ruling because i don't really want to fucking go through this whole song and dance with them and i'm like i'll just link you the ruling so i link him the ruling um and then i flip Ryko and i blind target one of his back row and then he leaves the game so the card we targeted was solemn judgment he had Two bottomless, book a moon set. Now, he could have done some stuff here. I mean, like, he books the drill warrior, and then, okay, we we have to flip the drill warrior, and then he bottomlesses it on the summon, and that's pretty fucking good for him. I mean, we just lose our drill warrior. He's still got only two cards left over, psychic commander and one bottomless after that happens, so it's probably not the best case scenario for him, and we can play around that bottomless, like, by using dark world lightning if we want to, but... Given the fact that he left, I think he was just over the fact that Raiko was going to target his solemn. So this is kind of proof of concept. Um, the best play for us here actually is to flip Raiko, target that back row. Once the solemn goes, uh, we can try for the heavy storm. Heavy storm resolves, clears all three of his back row. Drill warrior, pitch brow, draw an extra card, banish the drill warrior, just pass the turn back. He has two cards. Next turn we're getting drill warrior. We have like six cards and we just take over the game in with regards to card advantage we could also even crash the Raikou in case he draws d fissure that way um if we so if we crash the Raikou, the Raikou will be in the grave and if he has he top decks d fissure we can drill add back the Raikou um to make sure we have an out to d fissure in our hand once all of this is gone so yeah pretty solid pretty solid showing from the deck's first proof of concept but a little bit annoying the guy quit out as soon as we got the lucky snipe it was a 40% chance we had the Typhoon, we had the uh, uh, Raikou, and we also had the Dark World Lightning, so 60% chance, really, that we were going to hit something, but, you know, it just worked out. The second game is up against the Black Swordsman, uh, and this game is really, really intense. So, there's a lot of decision points in this game that I'm not sure how they would affect certain things, but we lose the Rock, Paper, Scissors, he gets to go first, he starts off with Lone Set, Pass. Our opening hand is okay. If Morphing Jar resolves, our opening hand is insane. It's like amazing. But if Morphing Jar does not resolve, then uh, we're gonna be struggling a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and alert first to try and get some get an idea of what we are working with. And we see two more cards that uh, give us a couple of options. So here I can banish Caius to conceal the fact that I am playing Dark World. Basically, I don't want him to know I'm playing Dark World, because that way, Morphing Jar is more likely to resolve after I set two. And I have the option to set Volcanic Shell. This is a little bit of spoilers you're seeing his turn, because I didn't stop the fast forward fast enough. But, um, basically, I had the option to set the shell and try and bait a Ryko Pop. And I thought for a long time about that, and I thought maybe, you know, he set Ryko turn one. But statistically speaking, in Edison format, Turn 1 sets are more often than not, not going to be Raikou. More often than not, they're going to be anything but Raikou. It could even be Hamster, it could be whatever. So I figured, if he has Raikou and he pops my shell, 
he could possibly just have another Raikou, and that makes it really annoying for me, and I still need to resolve this jar to win. So I want to give him as little opportunity to find an out to this jar as possible, and so I decide to set it immediately this turn. He doesn't have a Raikou to pop my monster. If you look at his hand, he's actually got some pretty good cards. He's got Foolish Burial, which could get him to a possible Synchro play, maybe send something like Plague. Although that's not ideal, he's got Mind Control, he could take my set monster, but he doesn't have Tuner Access quite yet, so um, it's not ideal for him. So he just decides to set Sangin and continue to Sandbag. Um, he could have also attacked with the Sangin. I don't think that that's a terrible play, uh, but that would have obviously worked out well for us as well. So he just decides to set Sangin and pass. Um, I think on on his turn if i was playing as him i would have tried to attack with the sangin just to try and bait a deep prison or something i don't really know um and if sangin gets popped or if the set monster gets popped then you can search like plague and it's like it just it's just nice anyway i just draw gore's flip jar if he has herald of orange light um then that sucks and we probably lose but if he doesn't have herald of orange light then we're actually going plus eight here which is fucking crazy no it's not plus eight let's figure it out so we're discarding four cards so we're going minus four then we're drawing six so that's plus two we're getting silva that's plus three uh we're getting a shell search so that's plus four we're getting avarice so that's plus five so we're going plus five off of this morphing jar which is fucking insane <laughs> it's actually so fucking crazy we draw into some pretty solid cards here i'm not gonna lie this this gives us a lot of uh a lot of things to play with now we realize he's playing zombies so one of the cards he might not have tried to attack with is spirit reaper and one of the cards he might not tried might not have tried to attack with is pyramid turtle so i get kind of a read right now that he has pyramid turtle and spirit reaper or some combination of those two cards um possibly he has like a goblin zombie and a pyramid turtle something like that but uh, realistically, I'm thinking because he didn't attack, his monsters don't swing into Mirror Force that well. That's just my um, idea of what's happening here. And so the best way to play through two set monsters like this, specifically Pyramid Turtle and um, what is the other guy? Spear Reaper. The best way to play through it is actually by using Red Dragon Archfiend because this guy actually, his effect activates so it's after damage calculation. If this card attacked an opponent's defense position monster, destroy all defense position monsters you control. This card actually gets through um, Pyramid Turtle. So you'll attack the Pyramid Turtle, flip face up at the end of damage calculation. Red Dragon will destroy all their defense position by his effect. The Pyramid Turtle will not be destroyed by battle, and then he won't get to tutor something from his deck. So that's like kind of the line I want to go for, but I also want to get Drill going. So the best line to do that is to activate Shell first, you know, get the, get the last Shell out of our deck. We've also got Volcanic Rocket. We could just Rocket pop both his monsters with Blaze Accelerator, but I'd rather save Rocket for like the um, the comeback play, basically. Anyway, at this point, I'm thinking worst case scenario from him, he's got Brain Dad, like crazy stuff, and Burial. Like Brain Dad Burial is kind of like the worst case scenario for us. Anyway, moving forward, Quick Draw, Pitch Dandy, get two tokens, uh, Synchro into Drill Warrior, Drill Warrior Pitch Shell. So we don't want to pitch Dandy because obviously that would lock our board. It would lock us out of our drill. It'd be really stupid. Um, so yeah, definitely want to pitch the shell there. Going to go ahead and Normal Debris, bring out Dandy, Synchro into Red Dragon. Now you're probably thinking like, oh, this sucks because you're locking your own board. But actually Red Dragon Archfiend is really nice here because during our M phase, we destroy all other monsters that did not declare an attack. So we'll be blowing up our own tokens and creating space for our Drill Warrior to come back. We're going to attack into the set Sangin. One thing that's nice here too is in the like crazy circumstance that it's like a Raikou or something, um, we still do have that Avarice set, which is going to be able to shuffle back our cards and do what we need to do. Uh, Pop all this monster. He's going to get two searches. So it's actually really good for him. He's going to search Gale and Plague. That's going to put him up to seven cards in hand, drawing up to eight cards in hand, but his hand is like super locked with like a whole bunch of normal summons. So pretty bad jar for him. We're going to hit for 3,000. He has a little bit of connection issues, but I decided to just play into Gores. Gores can't get over Red Dragon anyway, so he'll need more than just Gores to get over Red Dragon. Uh, although Gores here would be really fucking bad for us. Like, I can't lie, Gores would just be really terrible. Um, just because Gores plus like Caius or something like instantly makes our board look really bad. 
Uh, main phase two, I'm going to go for the pot of avarice. He accidentally takes another 23, but we correct it shortly. Um, so with this pot of avarice, I decided to leave debris and dandy. And the reason I leave both debris and dandy is because I need drill to come back and add debris dragon so I can black rose to come back after he breaks my board. And I need dandelion in grave so I can black rose um, and maybe pitch something other than dandy. To I, I could have honestly uh, shuffled back the dandy and left like the brow or something. But I figured at this point it's probably fine to do this. Uh, we draw into Dark World Lightning, which is really nice. That means we'll have two ways to clear back row uh, before we go for that Black Rose play on the comeback turn. So pass the turn back to him. Um, end phase, pop the two tokens so that our drill can come back. He's going to go Normal Summon Zombie Master. He draws into Instant Fusion, which is pretty good. Uh, it's just like another body he can summon here. Um, but he's got to get that Plague in circulation before we can really start using this Instant Fusion. He's going to Synchro into Revived King Hades. Um, the next thing he's going to do is he's going to Mizuki back Zombie Master and then Zombie Master pitch Goblin Zombie bring out Plague. So he could make a bunch of different stuff here. Um, but the best thing for him to make is obviously Stardust Dragon. After the summons have resolved, then it's like literally just Mirror Force you have to worry about. And Stardust Dragon will also prevent him from, uh, losing to the, what is the card? The Comeback Black Rose Dragon, basically. So yeah, Stardust Dragon is the play here. Um, however, I do think he could have made a much more conservative play, just gone for something like Bryonic and then just bounced like Silver Red Dragon and that would have been okay too. And then he wouldn't have had to use all these resources, but I think this play is fine as well. He's gonna Synchron to Stardust and Stardust, again, will protect, you, protect his board. It'll protect the return most likely. He's gonna stack for Plague, bring out Plague, Synchron to Bryonic and Use Bryonic to bounce a red dragon. Now he's going to go to the battle phase, try to clear both monsters, and that's going to work because our back row is not a defensive back row, it's just Space Typhoon. There was some consideration on my turn to setting Dark World Lightning so that I could Space Typhoon my own Dark World Lightning if I needed to drop cores, but I figured if he was going to go for a crazy, crazy OTK, he was going to either use Bryonic or Dark Armed or something to clear my back row anyway, in which case it wouldn't have mattered to set the lightning and honestly just makes it a little bit more complex for me to come back if he does have something like heavy storm before going off anyway he sets his back row uh and then drill warrior is going to come back drill is going to add back debris so we've kind of got exactly what we want going on here i'm going to try and typhoon he's going to negate with stardust and then i'm going to go for the dark world lightning to target his back row now he could chain this uh but that would drop him to 25 and if it drops him to 25, then we can just go Debris, bring back Dandy, have the Drill, switch one of his monsters to attack with Black Rose, and then uh, Game Shot him. So he can't really afford to do that. He's going to just have to let the return get blown up. We're going to pitch Dandelion to get those tokens so I can go for um, my own Stardust Dragon, basically, and just so I can get a big wall going so that he can't really come back. We're going to summon Debris Dragon, special summon out Dandelion, Synchro into Stardust Dragon, get our own two tokens, uh, attack and then attack directly with drill warrior he didn't have gores last turn he could have gores this turn but um he would have had to top deck it and that just doesn't it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because now we have the tokens we have our own cores to defend ourselves we have volcanic rocket to come back into the game it's pretty much impossible for us to lose from this point so i'm just going to drill pitch shell shell pay 500 go search shell i believe i avarice no i don't yet yeah, i don't avarice yet just pass Stardust comes back. He has instant plus Caius to banish our Stardust, but now he's just dead on board to debris into the red dragon that he put back and drill have. So we grab the debris dragon, normal summon, bring out the dandelion, synchro into red dragon, and to play around battle fader, um, we attack with the red dragon first and then attack directly with drill. And we go into game two. Now for game two, I sided in this fashion. Took a couple screenshots of how I sided it or a screenshot, I should say, how I sided. Uh, I sided out Raiko Hamster because he showed me Instant Fusion. So Instant Fusion is pretty fucking good. They usually play three Caius. They play a lot of ways to get to revive King Hades. Um, setting a Hamster, setting a Raiko going second is usually pretty bad. This is a weird matchup because Dark World Lightning is not amazing, but we're kind of relying on it to break through the back row. So I've decided to keep all three in. I'm not really sure if that's correct. And also enables our Brow and our Silva, and we kind of need to enable those guys. Because um, Drill Brow is probably how we're winning this matchup. 
I cited in one book, cited out the charge. Once again, losing the charge does feel kind of bad, especially because we have two Avarice and they're a lot harder to support without the mills. So it's very likely I should have cited out some number of Pot of Avarice, if not all of them, because he's going to be on Book of Life. He's going to be interrupting my graveyard. He's going to be making it very difficult for me to resolve those powerful synergies. So it's just very likely I should have actually either brought in like the Cyber Dragons or like left in some amount of the milling, the charge even, and cut Avarice instead, or I should have brought in Brain Control or Decree or more Book of Moons even. More Book of Moon could have been really good. Um, however, I decided to leave in the Avarices, which was pretty stupid. <laughs> I'm not going to be honest, uh, just pretty dumb. So he sets, sets, passes. We Dark World Lightning the back row, pitch shell. The reason I go for Dark World Lightning on the back row is I figure Space Typhoon is a little bit more versatile. Um, but I'm not sure if that's correct. I'm not sure if that's better or not. Uh, it's possible we might have wanted to save the Dark World Lightning. Who knows? Who knows? I pay 500, go grab Shell. So Dark World Lightning could have either popped his monster or his back row. I decided to pop his... I'm going to pop both, basically. I'm going to go get Blaze Accelerator and pop both. But what I could have done was just normal Rocket, go get Blaze Accelerator, Blaze pop his monster, and then not Dark World Lightning to his back row and just save the Dark World Lightning. Um, that was another thing I could have done too as well, but... I figured that this was best because we still had the Space Typhoon to pop further back row. We pay 500, go search Shell, uh, and we can't attack because we used the Blaze Accelerator. He's got Book of Life, and now my Avers is looking fucking terrible. So, yeah, pretty bad for me. He's going to normal Goblin Zombie. I don't really understand him normally Goblin Zombie here. I think that that's a misplay. Um, but he's going to crash the turtle. He's going to go get another Goblin, and he's going to pass. I thought he was going to go get Plague and like make a Synchro or something, but ah, he just ends up doing this. He's got Grandma, Gores, Instant Fusion, so interesting hand, not terrible by any means. I do draw into a Dark for my Allure, which is nice. I Allure, and then I'm able to banish the Silva. So the way I see this game, or this situation going, is like, he must have like Zombie Master or something. So um, what I'm going to do is sack my Rocket for Caius, banish one of his Goblins, attack over his other, other Goblin. He'll search either Zombie Master or Plague, whichever the party's missing. He's going to go... Um, Zombie Master Plague into Goyo, attack over the Kaya, steal it, and then in that circumstance, I'll have Blaze pop the Goyo, Brow run over the Kaya, and so that's why I decided to keep Brow. So you got to think a little bit ahead there um, to decide which of these is better to keep, but I decided to keep the Brow as a result. Anyway, we sack for Kaya, target Goblin Zombie, deal a thousand, and attack over the other Goblin Zombie. Now I don't set the Space Typhoon here in order to play around. Um, to play around what is the card um heavy storm that's right i don't set space typhoon in order to play around heavy storm however you always need to be careful against instant zombies specifically that um when they search plague like this you need to be careful that they that they have don't have like uh an urbellum line so like if you have four cards in hand sometimes it's best to just set down to three um, just so you don't get Urbellum Yada locked. That being said, um, if he does have an Urbellum line, that means he also has a Black Rose line, which is two for three if I set the Typhoon. So I decide to keep the Typhoon in hand. And unfortunately for us, our opponent top decks brain control. So he is able to actually uh, come back into this game that he otherwise I think would have lost. So pretty frustrating, but it happens, you know, it's always going to happen. He's going to brain control, take the Caius, Normal Summon Plague, Synchro to Stardust, and then he does actually also have that uh, Urbellum line, which sucks. And I, I did consider this. I actually did consider this. I'm like, if he has Mind Control, Brain Control, plus the Plague that he searched, plus Instant Fusion, he can go Stardust plus Urbellum. And it's like literally a line I thought through, and I'm like, that is less likely than him just having Instant Fusion uh, Tuner that is going to Black Rose the field. So I was thinking, like, he has to have specifically Brain or Mind, but in hindsight... It's pretty obvious that that's what he had because he just like wasn't doing anything else and like the weird play with the goblin zombie doesn't make any fucking sense um so like i was thinking yeah he probably had like brain control he didn't it turns out the weird play with the goblin zombie was just kind of a weird play with goblin zombie which is totally fine um but i could have played around the next level of him having certain things anyway he attacks me for 22 and then for 25 uh, after draw locking me and unfortunately that's just game i, I can't do anything i have to t-set hope he plays around it poorly and he has grandma 
And um, he says, I played that so bad. And I was like, that end game was fine. And yeah, that is exactly the end game he should have gone for, which is Stardust plus Urbellum. Um, so I don't think he played that terribly. Anyway, before game three, I changed up my sideboarding. I think I made some better decisions, maybe some worse ones. I'm not really sure. I brought back in the Hamster. I brought back in the Raikou. I cut the Silva. I cut one Dark World Lightning. I brought in a second Book of Moon to try and interrupt those synchro plays, those powerful synchro plays. I brought the Charge back in to try and see Dandy and Shell as early as possible. But I'm not sure if this is the correct way to side. Either way, um, this game, our hand is a little bit a little bit clunky. We have double quick draw. We do have Foolish Burial. And this is where I kind of go for a type of limit testing. I'm not really sure if this is the correct line. This is our only Avarice, by the way. And yet we still opened Avarice Caius, which is not ideal. Um, I decided to go for Foolish on Volcanic Shell. Now this is not great, but it will make us a Drill Warrior and get our Avarice live. So I'm not sure if this is the right play, but I think it's definitely a play we could make. We could have also just Foolish Dandelion set Dark World Lightning and passed. And then he like maybe kills a token on our turn. We can Caius. But then it's like, I don't know, man. We have two dead quick draws. We have a Dandy and a Caius. We don't even have five monsters for our Avarice. We've got this Dark World Lightning just chilling. He's attacked us, so Dark World Lightning's probably not live. We don't have a great discard for the Dark World Lightning. I figured that this would just be the best line. Plus, if this drill goes unanswered, it should win us the game. Anyway, we pitch quick draw for drill. He sets, sets, passes back. We draw DD Crow, which is a really good draw. We're going to drill, add back quick draw, go main phase. He's going to dust shoot us and take our Caius. So that is a little bit frustrating, but we can still make this work. I'm going to Dark World Lightning his monster. It's possibly going to be a Goblin Zombie. Thankfully, it's not. It's a Pyramid Turtle. And pitch a monster. So that puts us to five monsters in grave. And then I can crow his monster. Uh, main phase two. I decided to play into Gores because I'm like, fuck it. If he has Gores, I lose anyway. So I, I just have to do it. I'm going to crow his monster. Um, I need to start applying pressure so that the Drill Warrior eventually gets us to lethal, basically. Um, I'm going to Pot of Avarice. Shuffle back everything but Shell. And then I'm going to go up, you know, plus two, which is pretty strong. Um, I did have to go minus on the Crow, but that does shut off a lot of the cards he could possibly have in his deck. We draw into another Crow and Book of Moon. We're going to be able to search with Shell, go grab another Shell, pitch the Shell to Drill, Banish, pay another 5, go search another Shell, set the Book of Moon, pass the turn back. He's going to draw Gale, and uh, or not draw Gale, he's going to draw Compulsory Evacuation Device, which is basically the perfect draw. So take a look at his hand. At this moment in time, we know he doesn't have Gores. We know he doesn't have a better play than Gale. So he probably doesn't have a zombie. Um, it's possibly as an instant fusion. It's possibly as Caius's, it's possibly as Dark Armed, whatever. There's a lot of cards he could have that are just fucking dead. Um, because if you're normal summoning Gale, if you're just raw dogging Gale, that means your hand is probably pretty bad. Um, he's going to have at least some way to deal with the drill. We know this because you wouldn't raw dog the Gale unless he had a way to deal with the drill. So. He's going to normal summon the Gale, attack for 13. We're going to take 13. Us paying those 2,000 life points early on, definitely kind of haunting us. I mean, our life total is getting really low. So that is a, probably the biggest weakness of Volcanic Shell, besides like just breaking on multiples, is how much life points it costs over the course of a long game, particularly with Avarice. So it's possible I should have never foolish this and just hoped to rip out of the situation with my dead hand. But um, it's also possible that... Um, he didn't he do, doesn't top deck compulsory and then the drill just wins anyway drill comes back we add back shell main phase one we activate drill he chains compulsory we're still forced to discard here because it's the effect has to resolve uh, as much as possible we're going to normal summon rocket rocket's going to grab blaze accelerator i'm going to attack over gale he's going to take 600 and pass i'm going to pass he's going to draw gores and pass and so up until this point we know he doesn't have gores because last turn he top decked the compulsory and the first turn we attacked him with Drill, uh, he took 2,400 and didn't drop Gores. So if he has Gores, he had to have top decked it specifically this turn. So I'm saying you have a 1 in 33 chance of ripping Gores, or you have a bunch in 33 chance of ripping just another dead card. This deck plays Triple Book of Life, Triple Instant Fusion. Maybe he doesn't have a conversion. Maybe he draw a Drew into like Caius's. Maybe he's drawn into Dark Armed. Whatever. There's a million dead cards he could have in his hand here besides Gores that he top decked off the top, um, which... You know, obviously, we want to start dealing damage. One thing about 
playing against the instant zombie deck is that they kind of start at like like around 7,000 because of instant fusion. So if you can put them down to 1,000 life points, you kill all the instant fusions in their deck. And if you can put them down to 800, you actually kill a solid four cards in their deck with uh, between brain control and the three instant fusions. So like that's pretty fucking good. And so like dealing the damage here is actually really important. Like attacking with this volcanic rocket into a hand where we should know that he doesn't have gores um, is pretty fucking important. Obviously, you know, if you know he has gores, the best place to not attack because uh, Gores just instantly wins the game, but alas, he has Gores, and so I'm like, all right, well, um, now he can summon his Caiuses, now he can basically win from here, there's not really much we can do about it, can't use a uh, Blaze Accelerator in main phase two, because our monsters cannot attack the turn you activate this effect, and we did attack with Volcanic Rocket, so we're just sitting with a bunch of dead cards in hand, pass the turn back, he draws Krevins, he's gonna go Caius, Caius target the Rocket, unfortunate for us, he's gonna Caius for 24, Gores attack, we book the Gores, um, draw for turn is Ryko. Now I make a misplay this turn, uh, I use the Blaze Accelerator to pop the Gores. What I should have actually done was pop the Caius, because any tuner can synchro with Caius to make Dark End and then pop our Ryko, which is really fucking bad. So what I should have done was actually pop the Caius here and not the Gores, and then set the Ryko. And then if he has a tuner, then he goes like whatever attack and then the Ryko can pop whatever didn't attack and then we're still fine um, but popping the gores there definitely a mistake uh, leaving him a synchro target in play is is super choke uh, but it doesn't matter he has broken mind control anyway which makes sense because that is a card that could have been like kind of locked in his hand uh, after that whole drill situation so pretty tough game um, we did get owned by like a series of really really lucky top decks I mean he topped that compulsory he topped that gores perfect moments and then he had the mind control one of to deal with this Ryko situation that being said i did misplay i did not pop the right card so any tuner here also would have beat us but i think the point is that the deck works and surprisingly well uh, it actually functions to a solid degree i think that this style of deck um should be explored more I think if I was to play it again a little bit more in the future, I would probably slim on some of the crazier like payoff cards. I'm trying to think how I would do it. I think it'd probably be something like um, just cutting the Silva maybe, or I don't know. It's really hard because once you start cutting into the Dark World stuff, it starts becoming a lot less consistent. The sideboard definitely needs work. The sideboard definitely I could have thought about bringing in the consecrated versus zombies. That's something that like I probably should have done. Um, obviously, zombies has pyramid turtle. It has Mizuki. It has ways to attack over consecrated light that are um, fairly common. Plus, it's got you know the brain control, the compulsories. Like it has a lot of ways to play through consecrated light. So it's not just a shutout like it is versus um, what is that deck? Black wings. And honestly, I could have thought about bringing in the decrees to help defend drill warrior because once drill is going it's pretty much impossible for zombies to really deal with it outside of using their trap cards so royal decree definitely something i could have considered but i was still a little scared of that stupid urbellum and i left in the threatening roars or, or yeah i left in the threatening roars over the decrees so uh i don't know if the deck needs to be changed it could be i think the silva could definitely be cut you can make arguments to cutting some of the other powerful cards like card destruction um, to add more consistency cards, like just more hamsters, more avarice, that type of thing. But yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, let me know if you guys try this deck out for yourself and have any suggestions, any sort of stuff in the comments below. And if you want to play this deck in one of the most uh, big <laughs> tournaments of all time, yeah, that's right. That's right. Really big Edison tournaments coming up. We got one coming up at the end of this month online. And then we've got a bunch of IRL ones. Spots are going fast for these. Make sure and sign up if you plan on coming to RBT Los Angeles, RBT Maryland, or RBT New York. You can find the sign up links in the description below. Also, 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 have a good day. See you guys in the next one. Peace.